Don McCullen retrospective book from the Tate, published in 2019, the 1st of February by Tate Publishing. 240 pages, 9 inches by 11. It's quite a hefty book. These are the pictures. I haven't been to see the exhibition, but I presume most of these or all of these are in the exhibition, or there may be more in the exhibition than there is in the book. I'm not really sure. In the back, there is a sort of chronology of his life and, and different dates and, and, and sort of significant dates. And then um, a chronology of different Times covers, Sunday Times, sorry, and right up to 2017, returns to Syria. And then list of exhibited works. And that's just that, that's really interesting. Further reading by, for Don, anybody want to look at further stuff with Don? And then, and then this is the credits right at the back here. And then this fold out sleeve. So, not being the same, the exhibition is from the 5th of February and it runs until the 6th of May 2019. Everything about this exhibition in context of Don is incredible. The fact that he's a photojournalist, the fact that he's a great photographer, that he's on at the Tate. I think the problems the Tate exhibition and, and not even a, anything to do with Don is the prices they charge. The costs to see this exhibition or I think for a wage person in the region of £17. I can afford to pay £17 to go and see this if I wanted to. For an unwaged person, for somebody maybe on disability benefits or somebody who's not working, it's £1 less. The concession fee is £1 less than the tickets which are for fully waged people. If anybody from the Tate's listening to this, please what are you thinking when you do something like that? I just can't believe in 2019 that a gallery which states they are the nation's gallery is charging such a significant fee for, for people on benefits, on carer's allowance, on unemployment benefit. That much money they can't actually get into this exhibition. As a wage person, I have no problems paying the £17. I have, you have overheads, I get that. But so has unwaged people and people on benefits, they have overheads too. And £17 plus travel into London is a lot of money. And I feel that the Tate should take some responsibility. Especially when you look at somebody like Don and his upbringing and his background. And now his work's become exclusive. It's, it's, it's not on, it's not cricket. And it, it's, Tate, if you're looking at this and you, you, you board of directors, you're listening to this video, sort that out because it's wrong. Don McCullen, the just the guy grows on you. The more I see his work, the more I fall in love with his eye, the way he sees the world. I'm gonna go through this. This book is easily available at about 40, 50 quid on the on Amazon from the tape. Let's have a look through it. I'm not gonna show you all of it. Here is the Director's Forward Curator's Acknowledgement Introduction, Don McCullen on Assignment, The Other Side of Don McCullen. It goes from early work to right through to Southern Frontiers and, and via sort of Vietnam, Cambodia, India, Southern Ethiopia, to Southern Frontiers and his landscapes, which he's renowned for as well. But Southern Frontiers is an interesting one. It's his documentary of North African landscapes and the remains of the Roman Empire, which is fantastic. It's a great idea for a project. So I'm going to look at some of that. And here is the director's forward, Alex Farquharson. So Alex Farquharson, please sort your, your fees out for underwaged individuals, please. Uh, Aisha Mueres, assistant curator, contemporary British art. And introduction. Again, I think by Esha Madars, I can't pronounce her name. I do apologise if I got it wrong. So this is a sort of overview and introduction of the whole process of putting Don on. Don McCullen on assignment. This is Shara Mavlian, I really apologise again. I think that McCullen was peace weary before he even went to war, John Le Carre. And this is John Bulmer's shop, Don McCullen carrying an old woman to safety during a gun battle in Cyprus, 1964. He's a lovely guy, you know, real, real empathy with everything. And he's a very humble guy as well. And 
it's it, it just somebody I I've met somebody I've shared a glass of wine with many years ago and and somebody who I used to just think of him as another photojournalist. I never really took a lot of notice when I was younger of Don and as the years have gone by I've realised how good he actually was and his contribution to British photography and, and photojournalism and in British press and as being it just being a human being, you know, it's a, it's incredible and it's just a privilege to have met him and to know that he's still producing work at his age. And if you can check out some of the BBC programmes which he's on at the minute on, on on some of the insights into his life, it's just fantastic. Really shows who he is. I finished my war book now. The next one I will write is going to be fun. That's sort of con Kurt Vonnegut. Slaughterhouse Fire 1969 and these are just caught the other side of John McCullen and I'm going to get away from the hatred and misery it clings to me because I've seen so much of it and if I don't run away from it it's going to destroy me my war photographs belong to another person on the other side of my character which I was going away from the more you flare yourself with guilt the more energy you give away I'm going to harness my good fortune dig myself a hideout in the country where I can keep away from people and technology and I'm going to take pictures of England for the rest of my life. Wow. That was in 1979. Wow. I'm so pleased Don's still going strong and still producing work. It's fantastic. Anyway, so this is his life. It's just charting the sort of, you know, his thoughts and, and a sort of introduction and a, a way of his life. And that's um, Somerset Levels, 1990, Glastonbury. And that's Temple of Baal, and that's in Syria. So, starts with early work. I'm going to drop this down a little bit. I ain't going to show you all of it, it's not fair. So this shot, I'm led to believe, is the governor's. This was the first piece of photojournalism. Well, there's a portrait of the governor's, a local gang, I think. And this was published in The Observer, and this started his life as a photojournalist. And you can see he's ahead of himself, aren't you? I mean, 1958. Look at that. Look at how brilliant it is and composed. You can see Don was well ahead of his time at the time and just getting this totally, absolutely spot on and nailed it, everything, composition, exposure, everything. Photography isn't just about pushing the button, it's about the experience of being there. Finsbury Park. So this early stuff is around London kids scrapping, Jewish district. I'm gonna come down a little bit more, I think. I think if I can hold the verticals on that, because I don't really wanna to show too much of this. So, this is all, this is Docklands. This is 1962. Berlin, that's a great shot, isn't it? I love the perspective, almost like a worm eye view, isn't it? Or looking up, it's um, square format as well. Checkpoint Charlie, 61. I can come even further down on this. Let me just... Checkpoint Charlie. American troops looking across the wall, Berlin. Um, so if you think about it, 1958, the governors, within three years he's in Berlin shooting as a photojournalist. Wow. That's a quite a, a speedy, into gear career move, isn't it? It's, he's, he's actually covering stuff in Germany, which was segregated as well then, look at that. Cyprus, so now we're only five years later. Now he's covering the civil war in Cyprus and Limassol. And I wonder if this is where he really started seeing death. Cyprus left me the beginnings of self-knowledge and the very beginning of what they call empathy. I found I was able to share other people's emotional experiences, live with them silently and transmit them. Turkish defenders. Wow. Some incredible shots on the other side, but I, I'm not going to show them. Let me 
the dead bodies. These are Turks going to taking them to the mosque. 64. We're in the Congo now on a mercenary. Let me just throw that up. Okay. Now I'm having to jump here because there's some pretty gruesome stuff coming up. I've just missed that. Again, I'm clipping the pages because there's a lot of horrific stuff. And we are in um, Biafra now. There's some... Um, this is Biafra 1969. I'm shooting the casualties. Oh, look at them. It's beautiful. A dignified presence in a 16-year-old victim. 1968. Vietnam, 1968. So in 10 years, he's covering, he's gone on a major escapade, hasn't he? He's really, he's gone from Finsbury Park to Vietnam to war, death, destruction. He looked like an Olympic javelin throw five minutes later, this man throwing the hand was like a stumpy cauliflower, completely deformed by the impact of a bullet. Wow. South Vietnam, 68. This picture here, I've had in my flat near the TV for years. I just used to sit and stare at this picture. It's just incredibly beautiful. You just see so much of this. You can smell it. You can just sense the whole war and everything through that guy. Old Vietnamese man, Tet Offensive, South Vietnam. And again, I'm just jumping out. It's the hospital, the wounded. And now we're back to the East End, and this is 1970. This guy's sleeping. Wow. Here's the homeless Irishman, 1970. It's a really famous shot. Let me just jump it up a little bit. Wow, you could just, it's all the dirt, and amazing. I wonder where this guy is now, if he's still alive. So look at ourselves in 1971. It's quite interesting, isn't it? When you think about that, what this, this whole exhibition covers, yet the Tate are charging a lot of money for people who can't afford to go in, who are actually excluding people in these situations are not able to see this. It's crazy, crazy. And I don't, I'm, I'm sorry I'm throwing a bit of a negative spin on it because I, I absolutely, totally respect everything about Don McCullen and I know he has got nothing to do with the pricing, but Bradford in the North. Oh, look at that. That's a classic, that's a famous shot. I'm just going to keep that frame on it. It's not quite the full frame, but just fill the frame with that. It's just beautiful, isn't it? 1975. I'm not going to show you the shot on the other side. It's from a strip bar. Bradford City Centre. So he does swap between square format and 35 mil. Nikons, I, I guess it was, wasn't it? He was into Nikons. Here's the men of Saxo Call in Sunderland. Concert, my area. I'm going to show you this because it's gorgeous. Look at that. So we're about halfway through the book. Northern Ireland. That's another famous shot. London Derry and the, the sequence of events which are the bog side. Uh, and the Catholic youth attacking the British soldiers. And so when are we? 1971, Londonderry. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Isn't that extraordinary? 
That's in um, London Dairy still. British summertime. Look at that. Wow. That Scarborough somewhere. Yeah, Scarborough. I remember that shot. I remember that beach. Wow. Some of the party crowds. There's not much in there. I wonder if there's more in the exhibition. Bangladesh. Cholera. This is um, contaminated water. Beirut. Now, there's lots of words with this and I'm just skimming through it. And to be honest, I think you should go and see the exhibition. Lebanese family leaving the martyr's ceremony, cemetery Beirut. And this is a psychiatric hospital after the shelling. Oh gosh. Iran, Iraq. Let's have a look, 91. This reminds me of like a Luke Delahaye project which he did where he did the smoke after bombs exploded. It was quite an interesting project. I see if I can grab a hold of that. It's such a good shot. Kurdistan, 91. Oh, look at that. It's great. Prisoners. India. There's some other stuff on the other side that I'm not going to show you. Beautiful. Look at that. Horse market. And this is 1987. Tibet. Oh, it's in Delhi, but it's a Tibetan family. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Southern Ethiopia. From Addis Ababa, it's a journey of three days on rough roads down to the Oma Basin. I've been down that way. I've been further than that. I've been, I went down to the Ogadan. I've been here around these areas. It's um, really an incredible place. Beautiful Ethiopia, actually. Looks like that. Let's jump out. Still life. Landscapes. And what I want to jump to is the the southern frontiers one, which I find fascinating. The Temple of Bell in Syria. Decamanus in Syria. The colossal Roman strong structures from 2,000 years ago filled me with awe. So. Again, the chronology. I think. I think we all have to really respect Don for his commitment, his life work, and his fantastic photography. And I've gone interested to see the exhibition and see if it's, I feel, a true picture of Don McCullen. The book's okay, the book's great. I'd like to see other stuff and see if there is a bit more on, that in, on the wall and if there's a little bit more in Duff and this is just a sort of overview of actually what's on the wall. Maybe it's not, maybe it's the whole thing. Anyway, get this out to the exhibition and uh, if you can afford it. And thank you very much.